So I want to start today, if you'll open your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And this really isn't necessarily part of what the ground that we want to cover, um, but just kind of an introduction. I believe this came up in my heart this week, and I know that it's super important. Um, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. We look at this verse quite a bit here, but write this statement down. You always have to hear from your position. You always have to hear from your position. So every time you hear the word of God, whether it's being preached or it's being taught. Now jumpstart, this is a believer's meeting basically, and this is a leader's meeting. So this is primarily going to be teaching. We're not doing a bunch of spitfire preaching, none of that. This is more line upon line, precept upon precept. But regardless, whether it's preaching or teaching, you have to hear from your position. What that means is you have to hear from Ephesians 2.6. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ. Because if you don't hear from that position, you will be vulnerable to pride, guilt, and shame, condemnation, especially from a teacher and, and I'm a warrior in, uh, as it pertains to being a teacher in the sense that like, um, I'm not trying to teach on topics that's not my grace. Um, you know, my grace is always consecration. My grace is always, you know, Matthew 6, 24 through 34. That's, you know, almost everything that I say comes back to that. And so if you don't hear from your position, then you, you have a really hard time, not only with jumpstart, but you have a hard time with any kind of training in that way because you feel like garbage about yourself. The intention is not for you to leave and feel like garbage about yourself, but according to 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yes. See, if you don't hear the word of God and then apply it, you won't reflect righteousness. You have already been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but you need training in order to reflect that. You need the honest and truthful preaching of the word of God that loves you enough to say, you're not looking like this. This is not how you look. Now, religion will say, just look the part on Sunday, but training gets into your heart on Tuesday afternoon and says, that's not okay. That can't stay there. That's, that's not Christ honoring. That does not please him. And so if you don't hear from your position, again, you won't recognize, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 19, God was working in Jesus, reconciling the world to himself, which means like we looked at last week and we'll touch it again today. When we are to deny ourselves and pick up our cross, he is working with us in order to do that. We are not doing that by ourselves. So we hear from a position of victory. We recognize, okay, I already have the victory, but how do I give expression to that victory? Because you cannot, uh, as, as it says in Matthew chapter six, verse 24, you cannot love God and mammon. You've got to understand that that is the root of every, uh, and let's just look at it. We'll jump into it. And we have so many different things today, and we're just going to trust the Holy Ghost that we are led and that we get it all the right way. In 1 Timothy 6, verse 10, you guys know the verse, uh, the Amplified Classic, the love of money is a root of all evils. It is through this craving that some have been led astray and wandered from the faith and pierced themselves through with many acute and mental pains. The love of money is the root of all evil. Everything that is a sin starts there. It starts with lust. It starts with desire for, for something else. And in that same passage, if you jump down, and let me get there because it's not typed out in my notes. 1 Timothy 6, I believe it's verse 
um, 17, just a few verses down from 1 Timothy 10, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, because the love of money isn't just something that rich people, so to speak, are vulnerable, peop- are vulnerable to. Poor people are just as vulnerable to them. Poor people are just as vulnerable to the love of money because the love of money encompasses trusting anything man-made outside of trusting God. So a poor person that's dependent upon government assistance or do you understand what I'm saying? Like that, that's going to pull you away. These forces are in the earth and they've been in the earth since the beginning of time. And so in denying our flesh, we have to recognize what we're up against. This is in the air. This is in everything that we see, especially as a nation. And we cannot be passive. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And soldiers look a certain way. We were sharing this with the interns this morning. You guys are familiar with the verse and we used it for many of you that are in this room that are our our ministry, our body team leaders at our Christmas party. It was very powerful. It was very festive as we watched a war movie and people getting their guts blown out. But the reality is we are in a war here. Second Timothy two, three through four says, overcome every form of evil as a victorious soldier. See, you already are that. That's God's part. And again, this is 2 Timothy 2, 3 through 4 in the Passion. 2 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. You already are a victorious soldier, but you have to do your part. That was God's part, to make you victorious. And then he's even going to work with you to reflect that victory but you have to recognize that that's, what you're, well, that's what's required of you, okay? And it says, for every soldier called to active duty must divorce himself from the distractions of this world so that he may fully satisfy. Everyone say fully satisfy. Fully satisfy fully satisfy the one who chose him. And Reverend Joe Morris talked about this on Wednesday night so beautifully that that how we live here follows us into eternity. And so when we looked at last week, this issue of denying ourselves and really being led by the Holy Spirit, when we looked at Romans 8, 14, okay? So it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And we said that sentence is actually reversed, right? That it actually, for as many as by the spirit are being led, they are the sons of God. So you can walk after the flesh right out of your sonship. You can walk after the flesh right out of your inheritance, right out of what God has provided for you because you don't deny your flesh. So this is what Romans 8, 14 says, which in many cases we extract, which is fine. It stands alone. But look at what Romans 8, 13 says right above it. And then we'll read them together. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death, you, you have to put to death your flesh. God can't put to death your flesh for you. That's the only thing that was not defeated in the, in the crucifixion and in the resurrection was your flesh. Everything else was defeated. That's why we said last week, according to 1 John 3, 8, that the enemy is not your problem. He has already been defeated. So when you get up every single day, you put the enemy in his place but then you have to wage a war against your own flesh. And that includes casting down thoughts. It, and, and there's underlying things that have been infused into our culture that if we don't recognize as they are, You know, the Bible says that it's only truth that sets people free, which is why it's so important that you surround yourself with people of truth, you follow people of truth, and you follow people who have fruit in their life. And you do what they do. If you want the results that they have, then you have to do what they do. Now, that's not about making everybody little robots and you're losing your personality or whatever, which 
who cares about your personality anyway? Maybe it does need to get lost because you just keep using that as an excuse. Well, I'm just not like charity. I'm just not like faith. I'm just not like Pastor Kathy. You know, I just work this thing out different. It's great. It's great. It's going beautiful. You know, your kids don't listen in church. Your little boy thinks he's a girl. You, you know, and these are things that are happening in our church. Okay, not in someone else's church, but in our church. Okay, so, so that's not going to work. That's not how God set it up. That's not his design. This is to be transmitted from generation to generation to generation. And if there's no fruit, there's a problem. And we can't pray and take authority over the devil and say it's the devil because it's not the devil. And he's energizing those kinds of prayers with an evil laugh as he watches you put the responsibility on God that God has put on you. It's religion. And it will perpetuate defeat in your life year after year after year. So reading them together, Romans 8, 13, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live, let's read it together now, for as many as by the spirit are being led, they are the sons of God. So in um, Ephesians 6, 12, when we're looking at this wrestling that we have, the, the opportunity to, to, to em, uh, embrace every single day, we're recognizing the fight is not with the enemy, but with the flesh. And so Luke 9, 23, in the Amplified, he said to all, if any person wills to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget and lose sight of himself and his own interests, refuse and give up himself, take up his cross when? Daily. Follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying also. So denying means to declare untrue, assert to be false, to refuse to believe, to reject, to turn down, or to turn away. Now, in doing this, we recognize in fighting our own flesh that there has always been this underlying war. And, and that's why I believe um, Paul said, it's 2 Corinthians 4, 18, for we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So there's something going on that I can't see. So when I'm fighting my flesh, there's obviously an external fight that I'm aware of, but it's rooted in this underlying thing. And so basically I titled this today, Daily Under the Surface. You know, if you have an excess in your life in any way, there's a root and it's the love of money. If Jesus said, you cannot love me and love money, then that is the, so it's like when you put two things in English, I heart English so much. English grammar, the whole thing. I, Pastor Kathy and I sometimes tag team on the PFS editing it. And most times I, I don't have her look at it because I'll edit it. She'll re-edit it, take out everything I did. And then I'll redo it a third time the way I had done it originally. Because math's her thing and, and different um, grammar styles reflect different kinds of punctuation. So she says, I use too many commas. She makes one sentence into an entire paragraph. It's fine. But I, my way typically like wins out because she has all these run-ons or whatever. So I really like, I really like English. I've always liked English. Sentence structure, all that stuff, super boring. Um, but um, so if if we, we call it this in youth ministry, um, young adults with interns, it's a collection of messages that we've called the ring, uh, referring to like a boxing ring, because in many cases, fear and faith are put in the ring together, and fear and faith are not in the ring together. Fear is in the ring with love, 
and faith is in the ring with works. We know that because of how the word of God reads. So if perfected love drives out fear in 1 John, is it 16 or 18? Let me see. Uh, 1 John, since I quoted it, let me give you the... First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. First John 4, 18. And then Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. For you're not saved um, by works, but by grace through faith. And so, so this is important because if you're in fear, faith isn't the, the immediate issue. Love is. Right. And faith works by love. And so we've talked about that and we've done the whole thing. Well, the same is true as it pertains to loving God serving God versus serving money. That's the bottom line. Because in money, because of how our world system is, is, it's from the very beginning. You can read it all through the Old Testament. If you have the money, you have the power. You have the land, you have the armies, you have control from the very beginning of time. And so it's not just the money, it's everything the money provides. It's the way that the money um, in a counterfeit way brings satisfaction. And again, you can be poor and have your eye on it in that way, or you can be rich and have your trust in it in that way. But either way, if I'm not loving God with everything that I have, again, according to Matthew chapter six, let's just look at it in verse 20, we'll start in 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And then uh, reflecting on your eyes, your focus, verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If your eye is single, if your eye is single. So unknowingly, every single day, there is an unspoken fight to keep my eye single. And, And if I'm not singly focused, what am I being pulled to look at? The love of money. Everybody that's been pulled away into a wrong relationship, what's it rooted in? The love of money. The desire for a false sense of security. Or everything that the world system paints as success and fulfillment and peace and security. So it's all rooted in that. If thine eye is evil, verse 23, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if therefore the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? So when we're fighting, we have to be aware that the enemy's already been defeated. He can't do anything in my life if I don't let him. But, but there's gonna be these unseen pulls against my thoughts against my desires and my passions every single day, and it's all rooted here. And if I don't have training in righteousness in truth, and if I don't have the honest preaching in front of me, and I don't see it played out in front of me, then I can be deceived like we've seen so many people in our nation over the last year that have compromised the word of God for what? The, in the love of money is the fear of man. In the love of money is everything that pulls you away from confident trust in him. It's all rooted in that. And so it's like when you have your eyes closed and it's like you're, you know, fighting, you're going to miss your target, right? You're going to miss the punching bag. But with eyes open, with clarity, you can nail that thing aggressively. It's like when um, Jonathan was here, remember one night when he was ministering to all those people who had come down to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And he was encouraging them, um, you know, in their church attendance and, and not missing Sunday, not even touching Wednesday because most churches don't have a Wednesday night service. So, so the goal would be as you're traveling in to get them at least come to church once a week so many more opportunities here. And he said, and don't let the enemy for, you know, pull you for, you know, a couple thousand dollars, you know, a year to move or to disconnect or whatever. Everything that separates you, because like Reverend Joe said, you know, at the end of our life, the only thing that goes with us is what we've done for the love of God. And so there, if we don't fight this unseen war, so to speak, against our flesh that says this is more important. 
And really, it all is so shallow when you really break it off of you. It's really so flimsy, but these industries generate multi-millions and billions of dollars in what you wear, in your brands, in what you drive, in where you live. They're, they're driving an agenda. They're driving an agenda. Now, we have to acutely and aggressively be aware, uh, specifically as Americans, because we're in America. So, so when our nation specifically was founded, and we've talked about this before, but there were two reasons why people began developing um, lifestyle and livelihood in this nation. One was for relationship with God, without restriction. And the second was for the love of money, for, for that agenda. Now, to be honest, exploration and development of this land was prepared and was designed before a group of people broke away from the king and came over here for religious liberty. It was already in the plans. If you haven't already, especially if you have children, and especially if you have teenagers. And it's not just because we, you know, spent a week, you know, with Dr. Rodney this past week. You need to educate yourself. You need to know what's going on. If you haven't read these books, you need to. Now, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not trying to tag a yoke of bondage around your neck, okay? I just want you to realize that if you don't know the truth, you will be deceived into believing a lie. Now, I don't have the first one up here because I read it um, on audiobook. I listened to it. It took about, it took about a week. Uh, so Pastor and Greg and I listened to it. It's about 40 hours worth. Um, killing of Uncle Sam, that's where you want to start. Um, so because the reality is, specifically killing of Uncle Sam, goes all the way back to the 1800s and, and how people thought that were demonically influenced. Yeah. Right. They're full-on Luciferians. All that is encompassed in even our capital system, the way that, specifically in this book, the way that our natural resources are controlled, right? How the price of oil can be up and then it can be down. The price of diamonds, the price of gold, the whole issue of running out of natural resources that, that you know, that all of that is controlled. It's all controlled. It's all rooted in the love of money, which is demonic. It is demonic. So plans have been in the works since before America way before America was ever America. So when people broke away from the crown, praise the Lord they did, and came over here, that has been an interruption to this plan ever since our nation was founded. Now, the enemy is powerless against an anointed, a spirit-filled, an aggressive, and a focused church, which is why we in America have experienced the liberties that we've experienced up until this point because there was a church, when you think about the healing revivals that, that swept across the country in the late 20s and then rebirthed again in the time of Brother Hagen and Oral Roberts, there has been a stand to hold this agenda back. But more recently, and we know things are winding down and we can't control that, but you have to control your own household. Yeah. You have to control your own fight and aggressively now more than ever, win the fight one day at a time between the love of money, which encompasses every false form of security and loving God with all of your heart. Because loving God with all of your heart positions you as a servant to his purposes, to his plans, to his agenda with no account taken of how that agenda is going to benefit you, right? No account of that. And especially as it would benefit you compared to what the world calls success, right? I'm gonna serve God with all my heart and I'm gonna get a bigger house. 
I'm gonna serve God with all my heart and he's gonna bless me and he's gonna make me rich. That's, remember when Pastor Dean said, it was in our PFS a couple months ago, I will not allow the gospel of what's in it for me to replace the gospel of what I can do for him. Yes. That's, that's a Christian who's gonna lay down who, who lives life with that perspective. God, because I'm doing this, now you do this. No, the, the believer says, God, all I want is this. All I want is this. I don't want anything that the world says is secure, anything that the world says is success. I've, uh, because this is an unknown thing that can subconsciously, uh, why, why would any spirit-filled parent discourage their kids from going to an internship led by people that you know led by people that you know walked this out in a way that you can't help them walk it out because you've been divorced or you've been married multiple times and not not to put my life against your life but that's important you send your kids all these other places and you're completely ignorant to the agenda that is there or you don't know them why else would a spirit-filled parent discourage their kids from going all, after, all in for God That's right. if it weren't for the love of money? Yeah. Because they've literally told their students in this church, and this is not about the internship, this is about understanding this unseen war. Yeah. You'll never make any money like that. Yeah. You'll never make any money in the ministry. You'll never make any money working at the church. Yeah. Like that's the goal in life, yeah. is to make money. That's wrong. Here's the thing, and especially those of you, we just have a couple minutes, that have children. That's why I want you to be educated because you're fighting this fight in a different way from an adult perspective as an employee, as a mom and a dad, but our young men and women, especially those who are teenagers that have had their school system radically changed. If you've got little guys at home, they weren't as vulnerable to the change, especially if you put them in the co-op. But if they're older and you put them in the co-op, they're completely vulnerable because they've been exposed to this agenda a lot longer. So this text I received from my sister-in-law, she, um, so this is Greg's older brother's wife. Now she is an educator, that's um, her, her degree. She doesn't teach at all, she just homeschools, she has four kids. So she's at home with her four kids. She pulled them out of the school system before this ever even happened. Last year, because the state of Iowa, much like the state of New Mexico, is demonically, infused in government, okay? So there were already some things happening in the very small town. I mean, Greg's graduating class was 40 kids. So this is a super small town, but they were already participating in these transgender sort of things as it pertains to athletics. And their kids, a couple of them played sports. So there was already some stuff in the works. Well, more recently, one of her friends who still teaches in uh, Des Moines, which is just in not far away from where they are, Illinois and Iowa are the same. Same Any state yes. with a Democratic governor, and again, we're not making it specifically about them because we know the system is still the system, but there's a particular party that perpetuates the system more aggressively than the other. It's all gonna, it's, this is where it's headed. Okay, so she sent this text. So we spent one day on World War II so we could spend semester two on this. U.S. History Semester Two Module Links. Topic one, immigration. Topic two, migration. Topic three, foundations of inequality. Topic four, gender and sexuality rights. Topic five, modern inequality. This is how the system is changing. Kindergartners will start being encouraged to self-gratify. Kindergartners, okay? Now, your young adults and your teenagers have already been brainwashed to a certain degree as it pertains to globalism and just tolerance. So when, when they're pulled away from that environment that they maybe didn't even know that they had to fight against, and now they're involved in this environment every single day, that is culture shock to their flesh. Yeah. Yeah. When they have to dress a certain way, when they have disciplines, when, when they can't cheat, when it's required that they actually learn. They've not been required to learn. They don't want them to learn. 
When you read the books, you realize the agenda. They don't want you to go to college. They don't want you to be educated. They want you to depend on them, on their system. So th- who's behind that? Satan. Yeah. Of course. Satan. And, and when you don't educate yourself, and, and these tools have been made available to us, and we're grateful, but if we don't use them, and we're a passive parent, yeah. or we're a passive citizen, we're a passive believer, then we just ride on the faith of our pastors who aren't raising your kids. We hope our youth pastors do something powerful or we sit at home and pray. It's not God's job to brainwash your kids. It's not the church's job to do your job. Now, Pastor Dean said this last Sunday, you know, you, you have them here and take advantage of what's available And that's a big deal. And I'm not blowing our own horn. I'm just telling you, there's a lot of places that don't have the commitments that we have here to your students and to your children. But if you're not fighting this fight in and of yourself and really seeing every one of your decisions and every one of your fears and every one of your priorities throughout your day, the ways that you're spending your money, the ways that you're sowing, the ways that you're giving, the things that are your deepest desires then how are you gonna help them, right? So we'll look more at this next week. We'll pick up, and I'm just, I'm saying this for the purpose of, let me just give you one last verse, and then we'll pick up in James next week, and we'll even go all the way back to Genesis. Um, Proverbs 23, four. And don't compare yourself to the rich. Surrender your selfish ambition and evaluate them properly. Know what the agenda is Know that that's where the flesh fight is and determine that you're going to win. And when you see the truth about it, you realize, gosh, I'm like spinning my wheels for what is so temporary, for what is so shallow, for what is so stupid. You should be in an attempt to do everything that you can to be independent of the world system. And I'm not trying to scare you. I, 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 we talked about it, and I, I had to ask Greg. And, and I'm just telling you how you can follow us. You know, there were a lot of pastors who took that, what's it called? P-E-P or whatever? Vaccine. Oh, yeah. Oh, the money. The protection. Payroll protection. Plan. They're not giving you anything for free. Right. Okay? We figured it. That entire stimulus that we got back, we sewed it all. I had to ask Greg, how much did we sew here and here? We ended up sewing all of that plus a little bit more. And I was like, thank God. Thank God. I don't want what they have to offer. I'm going to put that in the kingdom where it can actually produce. Now, I'm not saying that to bring any sort of oppression. If you, you, I'm just telling you, they're not doing anything for free. They're not doing anything for free. God will lead you in any economy, in any circumstance, to be independent, to put your hands to work. Put your hands to work. Don't let them, don't let them. They want to make, they want your kids to eat their food, right? right? And if you read this book, you would know why. They're not your friends. Okay, they have things in the food, right? They're not, they're not your friends. And again, we're not creating this whole conspiracy and being suspicious, but we're, we're recognizing that we have an enemy. And if he showed up looking like an enemy, we would defeat him. They want to feed you. They want to clothe you. They want to educate you for free. Why? Right? Because they want you to think the way they want you to think. So you have to challenge that. You have to talk with them about that. They don't want you to have a, an incredible salary to pay for you to be proficient in sports. Guys, you can get so far in those places, they own you. They own your Twitter. You endorse who they say to endorse. You think those athletes are free? You think the multimillionaires in our nation that have a platform that that, that wasn't handed to them by powers that be? You're an idiot. You don't know. You don't know. You're not aware. Yeah. And it's your job to be aware. Yeah. It's not just your pastor's job to do all your studying for you right. and all of your thinking for you. 
You have to take advantage of these tools for yourself. They can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what not to do. Do not depend on them. You can depend on him. In any places in your life where you are not depending upon him, you know that you're losing the war. You're looking without for what is only within. It's not gonna satisfy. You'll take yourself right out of the will and plan of God. So we're...